Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of People's Health Dispatch. Uh, today, uh, we are here to talk a bit more about the recently concluded International Day of Safe Abortion and to focus especially on Argentina. So in 2020, as many will know, uh, the feminist movement in Argentina uh, had a landmark victory uh, because abortion was legalized by the National Congress then. And so thanks to this piece of legislation, uh, hundreds of women in Argentina were granted access to safe care, uh, which they didn't have before. Uh, and compared to decades when about half a million abortions were carried out in clandestine conditions uh, per year. So uh, today we are joined with, uh, by uh, Pablo Ral, uh, who is a family physician at primary healthcare level. Uh, and we are going to talk to him a bit more about what the 2020 victory meant in practice and what lies ahead. So uh, hi, Pablo, and welcome to, uh, to People's Health Dispatch. Hi there, hi to everyone. So uh, just to you know, come back a, uh, to to go back a step, uh, a couple of days ago, so on 28th of September, uh, we marked the International Safe uh, Day of Safe Abortion, and so feminists in Ar uh, Argentina also took uh, took part in these global actions. Uh, can you maybe tell me a bit more uh, what happened uh, around that day, and especially why is participating in the global movement important for Argentinian feminists uh, and health activists? Um, well, first of all, I have to clarify that I, I, I'll be speaking on on behalf of healthcare workers. Um, on this, obviously, I can't I can't speak on behalf of the feminist movement, so I apologize for that. <clears throat> um, the twenty eighth of September is an important day for Argentina. It has been so since the nineteen nineties, since it came about. Um, it commemorates a very special um, uh, yeah, a, a date for for both Latin America and Argentina. Um, it's allowed. Um, civil society at large and the feminist movement as, as a flag bearer for the right for abortion to, to be able to try and put abortion on uh, in the public agenda, um, which it finally was able to do so. And ever since abortion's legalization, um, it serves a, as a date to, it serves as a timely reminder that even though um, uh, abortion is legal, uh, uh, um, access to abortion is a different situation. No, no, the fact that it has been legalized doesn't necessarily mean that um, wi wi widespread access is, is available. Um, so it, it serves as a day to be able to, to, uh, uh, to be able to come up with a, with a balance in terms of uh, the goals that have, been, that have been achieved and the challenges that lie ahead. Um, and in that sense, both are very present in Argentina. A lot has been achieved since abortion has been legalized. Um, uh, access has improved uh, significantly in many provinces, but still there are many obstacles that, that still lie ahead, a lot of challenges that still need to be addressed. So it, it served uh, in that sense. Um, this year in particular, the 28th of September was also very important because um, it allowed the, the, the abortion movement at large to be able to celebrate um, that a doctor in the province of Salta, who had been um, legally processed for uh, providing a legal abortion um, was finally acquitted. Uh, her case was dismissed um, in what was a clear case of, of, of persecution from, from conservative sectors, from the judicial, judicial sector and the health sector. Um, so that was a big uh, victory for the, for the abortion movement and for the feminist movement specifically. Um, and in terms of um, how the 20th of September fits into the global context, I think um, Argentina's uh, abortion movement and the feminist movement here in the country has has uh, has grown a lot thanks to uh, the, the the global uh, abortion movement, uh, the regional abortion movement. So the, the, it's always been a, an important source of inspiration, of information, of experiences, etc., for the feminist movement. And since Argentina has one, has become one of the few countries in Latin America to fully uh, uh, legalize abortion. Our experience has in turn uh, helped to, to, to improve and to strengthen and to bolster the, 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 the demand for legal abortion in the rest of the world. And of course, you know, uh, so you mentioned that you will, will be speaking uh, as a health worker uh, primarily. So I was wondering, you know, uh, we, we did receive uh, 2020 in Argentina as a very big victory for, for women and for the feminist movement. So I was wondering, 
you know, from the perspective of physicians and of other health workers, what has changed since 2020? So, you know, uh, yeah, what have been the biggest changes that you have seen in your work? And uh, did it actually lead to an improvement in practice? Um, to answer the question, we need to, uh, we need to put things into context. Um, I speak as a health worker in the city of Buenos Aires, which is the richest city in, in the country. Um, I speak as a worker in the public health sector. Um, and in terms of guaranteeing rights and in terms of um, uh, uh, challenging uh, and trying to improve ba access barriers for, for patients in general and for, for women specifically, the public health sector in Argentina uh, is a lot stronger than the other health sectors. Um, so I'm very privileged in that sense. So what, what, whatever I, I can tell as my experience is not necessarily, is definitely not uh, the experience uh, that, that someone in the province of Jujuy could tell you about, or the province of Mendoza, for example, which are very conservative Catholic uh, provinces where all of these issues, religion, conservatism, uh, et cetera, intersect with, with the right to, to, to health and with the right to, uh, to access to abortion uh, practices and services. Um, so in my day to day, what has changed is that um, not necessarily for myself, because I have been uh, working towards guaranteeing abortion access before abortion was fully legal legalized. Um, abortion was legal in certain circumstances. Um, and me and, and the team that I work with um, uh, work to, to help women um, have access to abortion via those legal um, permissions. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, it's become a lot more simple. Um, uh, a, a, lo a lot of women who previously hadn't um, approached the clinic to, 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 for, for, for abortion services now do so because friends have told them about it because of word of the mouth-to-mouth, -mouth basically. And because women, you know, thanks to social media and thanks to the campaigning of, of the abortion movement, um, have, have realized that, that, that they big, their problem, which is an unwanted pregnancy, now has a solution and it's their right to be able to solve it via the, the health sector. Um, so that's improved drastically. Um, I think a very important issue for Argentina was that, as I say, abortion wasn't fully um, illegal. Uh, there, were, there were a lot of, um, not loopholes, but um, ways in which health healthcare professionals um, could help women to access abortion services via a, a comprehensive understanding of the legal framework, which was restrictive, but which allowed women to access abortion. Um, but it was very tiresome, it was very difficult, one had to spend a lot of time to be able to justify um, to, uh, the, why a woman had, had, had a right to, to an abortion in, in, in that situation. And that's not the case anymore. The focus is now strictly uh, on, on a woman's desire to, to solve an, a health issue irrespective of what's happening in her life. And it's no longer, the onus isn't on us to be able to justify before the law whether a woman has a right to access uh, abortion or not. So that's changed a lot. Um, abortion becoming legal has, um, ha has improved access also because a lot of healthcare professionals who previously were reluctant to offer services because they were worried about the possible repercussions um, professionally and, uh, and legally um, aren't worried about that anymore. So a lot of professionals have, have, have started offering services who previously weren't offering it. and um, uh, a very important aspect of the law is that it applies to the entire health system. So a lot of women who didn't have access to the public health sector because they, they had other health coverages, um, women who who speak to the majority of the population and, and more so in, in Buenos Aires, which is a, a rich city. So I would say around 60, 70 percent of uh, the uh, um, women in reproductive uh, in, uh, in a reproductive um, uh, period of their lives. Um, if they had that problem, very few would access the public health sector and, and would generally um, access healthcare abortion, but you know, in, in a clandestine manner. Um, and now their health insurance plans have the obligation to be able to offer those services. And that has been slow, but it's been progressive. And as far as we can see, it, it's definitely taking form. So um, that, that, that access, that, that road towards um, abortion access is definitely materialized, which is very interesting to see. But then on the other hand, you know, it's uh, probably not perfect. That's my educated guess. Uh, so can we maybe spend some time talking about the obstacles that are still in the way and which you face uh, or that women can face when they try to access abortion? Mm -hmm. um, Argentina is a federal country. 
um, so much like, for example, the United States, um, a, a federal law isn't necessarily a, 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 a applicable in, in each state or province. Uh, in the case of Argentina, we have 24 different provinces. Um, and it's a very different scenario here in the city of Buenos Aires, which is a lot more progressive, cosmopolitan, which has a long tradition of um, healthcare workers fighting for the rights of patients and for and the feminist movement fighting for the right for abortion, compared to um, other provinces which are um, more conservative, which have a much stronger Catholic population, which have a much weaker public health sector. Um, and where, you know, all of those things intertwine and they intersect and they, they create a scenario where even though you have a law which states that abortion is legal, uh, not necessarily, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that a woman can easily access a primary care level or a, a professional or any healthcare worker who not only knows about the fact that, health, that, that abortion is now legal, but also knows how to offer that service, who has the medication available, who, if they have to refer a woman to the second to, to second or tertiary level, um, no, ha, has those has those networks available? Um, and this is talking about put, putting the focus on the healthcare system. Obviously, from a cultural uh, perspective, um, uh, a lot more conservative societies uh, in, in these in these provinces um, tend to make um, a general understanding of society that abortion is now legal and you know uh, producing those transformations in terms of how people perceive abortion as a right and not uh, and no longer uh, you know a very social a big social taboo um are a lot slower than in the city of buenos aires or in other provinces say the province of santa fe or the province of buenos aires which are by and large big urban um provinces so the, the big disparities in terms of access to abortion still um, they are being addressed, but they they they, they still they still exist, um, and we, we we can't talk about uh, obstacles and challenges without talking about the counter movement, um, which like in the rest of the world is definitely present in Argentina. It's very strong. Um, it lobbies in very in, in different sectors of society, in the judiciary, in the health sector, um, in the media. Um, and its effects are there to see. Um, the, 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 the debate, uh, the, the cultural debate is still well and alive. Um, we have achieved a big victory in terms of the, the abortion movement. That's thanks to the feminist movement, definitely. Um, but it hasn't, you know, the, the, the debate hasn't been closed. It's, it's still there. Um, and I would say that's the, that's the biggest issue because that permeates towards how the judiciary um, reacts to uh, abortion demands that permeate towards how um, a, a nurse, uh, you know, receives the demand for uh, an abortion from someone in a small clinic in a conservative province. Um, the day that changes, you know, things are going to change. Um, but that's for the big, ch big challenge. Yeah. Okay. And uh, finally, so you know, um, of course, the uh, the success of the feminist movement in Argentina. Uh, was quite an inspiration for many other movements in the world. So, um, and I was wondering from your point of view, uh, what do you think that uh, is the biggest lesson or the takeaway that we can take from the experience of, uh, of, the, of the struggle for abortion care in Argentina? Um, I think that what the feminist movement has, has achieved here in Argentina, um, which, um, Although it has become a progressively circular, secular, and uh, and more democratic society, it's still a Catholic country, and, and you know, still has deep rooted um, conservative beliefs uh, in the majority of society. Um, I would say that there the are two things. One has been the way that the feminist movement has achieved converting a very specific demand, which originally was uh, of the feminist movement, in a public demand, you know, society uh, at large demanding um, access to abortion as, uh, uh, as part of the democratic platform, you know, if we if we consider ourselves to be a democratic society, a just society, then just like um, women should have access to, to divorce, men should have access to different rights, social and economic rights, then women should have access to, to decide over their own bodies, um, not from an individual perspective, but from a more collective perspective. I think that's that's definitely be put on the agenda by the feminist movement, and that's we've seen that transformation. I've seen it um, as, as as a white male healthcare professional, um, 
and hats off to the feminist movement for that. That's that's one of the main things that, that that's happened in Argentina and which doesn't necessarily happen in other countries. So that's one of the takeaways. Um, and then the other thing that has happened in Argentina, which has inspired many other countries in the region, and I, I would dare to say many other countries in the world, has been the way that the feminist movement has been able to um, not only foster, but also embrace a generational change. Um, you know, the, um, the, the new generations which don't which don't bring the same demands that second and third wave feminism had but they bring new 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 feminist demands uh they incorporate sexual dissidences they incorporate all sorts of other um demands that weren't on the uh, the fem feminist agenda 10 or 15 years back um and and the feminist movement has been able to to transform itself it has been able to uh refresh its agenda um and be more more in tune with what society needs um and, and that generational change which was seen in the ni una menos movement um which started in 2015 which was one of the main starting points for the turning points for for for, for when one can see when abortion finally got on the public agenda and one when one could see that the tide had turned uh, in terms of whether abortion was going to be legalized or not um th that was definitely one of the the, the the turning points for for Argentine society at large, and that was definitely thanks um, to the feminist movement. And I would say that's one of the more specific takeaways from from Argentina. Thank you so much, Pablo. Thanks to you. Awesome.